PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete, Pete's Tools here, we all going today, another beautiful day on my side of the world. Hey, I've had a couple of emails from you fellas, you want to know what sort of compressor should you buy when you first start out, you know, just for the home workshop, just mucking about. Do you want a direct drive one like this, or a belt drive one like this? Anyway guys, same as usual, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments if you want, and I'll just show you the difference guys, because either one of these could suit your needs. Anyway, let's get on with it. So first of all guys, let's have a look at the old direct drive one. Um, all pretty simple really, this is 2 horsepower. It says it's 2 horsepower, I've got my doubts, but anyway that's what it says on the tin, it's 2 horsepower. And it's 24 litres, so that means that this can hold 24 litres of air in this tank under pressure. And the pressure can be anything from about 100 to 120 psi. This is I think set at about 110, something like that. But you won't get 110 psi for the whole 24 litres. Once you get your 24 litres filled up into the tank here, the air just will start to bleed out. That's why you have a regulator here. I'll show you that in a minute, guys. So here we have the other side of it, guys. It's just got a little air filter on here, and it's got your motor here, and it's got your compressor pump in here. So this is all in one, like it's direct drive. So in other words, the motor's in here, and the compressor pump is in here. Whereas this one, guys... So guys, looking from the back side of the belt drive one, we have the motor here, whereas the other one it was all combined, and then we have the pumping heads here. If you remember on the other one I showed you, it had a little pumping head and then it had the motor. Well this is totally separate. This has actually got instead of one pumping head, it's got one, two, three pumping heads. It's got a cast iron block for the pump and the pistons to go up and down, because this is a three piston pump. We go up like that, like that, and like that. It gives you three times as much air, basically. And then we have a big three horsepower motor here to drive it. Now that's why I said with the other one, it says it's two horsepower, but I've got my doubts. If you look at the size of this motor, compared to the size of this motor, there's absolutely no comparison. So I don't know if the horsepower is different for a direct drive than uh, not a direct drive. I don't know anything about that. But it just seems to me a hell of a lot smaller to be called two horsepower, that's all. And also, if you notice here, guys, on the tank here, guys, this is a little 24-litre tank. And if we have a look on this one, so this tank here is 75 litres, guys. So we're, what, about one and a third times the size of the other little one? And if you just notice, the build construction of this one here, we have a look at it. And then you look at the build construction of this one here. you'll find that there's absolutely no comparison. This one here I can lift no worries at all. You can chuck it in the back of your car and do whatever you want with it because it's mostly made of aluminum. All these are aluminum parts. Like I say, it's only got one little aluminum pump in here and it's just got a little motor in the back here and a tank, much like the other one. But the other one is just like this on steroids. Now if I try and lift this one, guys, you've got two shows. No show and shit show. It probably weighs 75 kilos. Whereas the other little one, you'd be lucky if it weighed, oh, maybe 20 kilos. This is just a, a bigger build, bigger, gruntier build. But mind you, the price is a lot different as well. So I'm not saying that this is better than the other one. All I'm saying is you've got to have the right machine for the right job that you do, and that's all, guys. So whether you buy a direct drive or a belt drive machine, guys, they're much the same with the controls. You have your on-off switch here. You've got, like, a gauge over here that tells you the pressure in the tank, and you've got a regulator gauge here. Now the regulator, you turn this up and down, and the needle goes up and down, because just because you've got 150 psi in your tank down here, doesn't mean to say that you're going to get 150 psi to your gun, because sometimes you don't even want 150 psi, because if you're using like air tools and that sort of stuff, most of them run on about 80 or 90, so what you need to do is back this down to 80 or 90, or whatever it says that your tools run on, and then what that will do is limit the poundage that's coming out of your tank at one time so there may be 150 in here but you only get 80 or 90 or whatever you set it to coming out of there so that's how that works guys but it's the same on the little one and the big one exactly the same thing anyway guys there's also another way i reckon you can tell what, what sort of compressor you've got uh turn it on and listen to it these make about the same amount of noise but they are totally different noise here i'll show you we've got my big belt drive one here Now I've got my direct drive one here. Yeah. 
Here, this one here is where it goes ka-chunk, 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 and you can hear it sucking up the air. Whereas this one over here is sort of like a tinny sort of rattle. Anyway, guys, in my opinion, this one's easier to listen to than this, because this is this here sort of gets to a high pitch squeal, and this here also runs a lot hotter than this one here, because it's a lot smaller, of course. And if you're trying to pump a lot of air with this little one here, like you're trying to spray paint or something, then it ain't going to work because it just gets hot and then it'll just automatically cut out on the thermal overload. Whereas this has got a lot more grunt to it, you can keep on going and going and going before it'll cut out. So like I say guys, it's not that I'm saying one's better than the other, they both have their uses and they've both got really, really good uses. Like say for argument's sake, you've got a little one like this, a little direct drive one, and you want to do some stapling or some nailing or whatever, and you're just using one of these small guns, I mean this little compressor here will run this all day. No problem whatsoever. You might have a bit of an issue if you want to start spray painting your car and you want to spray paint like long lengths, or you want to do it for an hour, hour and a half or something on the end, then this one here is going to struggle to keep up, whereas this one here is designed to do that. So that's just horses for courses, guys. Whatever you want to do, get the right machine for your job. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But once again, you get what you pay for. This one here gives three times the air of what this does, but this one here is three times cheaper than this one. So there you go. Like I said, horses for courses. So guys, that was everything you didn't want to know about compressors, belt drive or direct drive. So there you go. Anyway guys, same as usual, like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below and we can have a bit of a yarn. And we'll see you next time, eh? And good luck with your compressing. Yeah! Pete's Tools.com.